Hi everyone, uh, Greg Phillips here. I wanted to take a few minutes to go over an analysis technique I recently applied on one of my consulting assignments and I thought it might be of interest to other Power BI users. Uh, the analysis is a comparison of the top end set of values with the average of the remaining values in that category. Uh, for example, one might be interested not only in the top end customers by sales, but also by how much they are above the average sales of the remaining customers. Uh, this can also easily be extended by adding directionality into the solution, such that not only can you see by how much the top end customers are above the average of the remaining customers, but you can also see uh, by how much the bottom end customers are below the average of the remaining customers. Uh, this technique is fully dynamic and responds to slicer changes. And we can see that as I change the date period here. You can see the customers change and change the numbers of uh, customers that are being shown, change the directionality. So to demonstrate this technique, uh, I'll need to grab a data set. And today I'm using the Enterprise DNA Practice data set which is a simple sales-based model with the sales facts table and a few dimensions, including customers and products, and of course, a dates table. Uh, here we see a standard waterfall layout with the dates, customers, and products dimension tables on the top row and the sales fact table below. Uh, all relationships are one to many uh, with the dimensions on the one side and the fact table on the many side as normal. To that data set, uh, I'll need to add a couple of additional tables to use as slicers, namely top end and direction selection. Uh, so first I'll go to the modeling toolbar and add a new parameter. Um, here we go. Uh, we'll call it top end. That's a whole number, set the minimum to one, the maximum to 10. The increment to 1 and the default of 5. I'll also have add slicer to this page enabled here. I'm not going to actually do it because I actually do have it already. Um, now I'll use the enter data button on the home toolbar uh, to create a directions table um, with values of direction for top and bottom and a sort column as well. Again, I won't actually do it because I already have it. I'll just show it to you here. Uh, where are we? Actually, I should do it in, in uh, data view here. Perfect. So there we go, top and bottom, sort one and two. So now uh, I add three slicers onto my page. Uh, first is the date slicer. Add that on here, change it to a slicer. Perfect. Uh, then we'll add the top end slicer from the the what if parameter table that we just created. Okay, and then we'll add the direction slicer as well. Where is it here? Directions. Perfect. We'll change that to a slicer and we're all set. Okay, uh, the slicer's ready. Next, I'll add a calculated table uh, to add another's row onto the list of all customers. Uh, I'll use the DAX union function to get all the existing customer values, and I'll add a new row for others. Uh, here, I'm just going to zoom this up, uh, hold control, and roll the mouse wheel. Um, perfect. To display our ranked values, uh, we'll start by adding a table to the canvas. Um, let's bring it over here, and we'll add in um, our customers from our customers and others table. Come on, you can do it. Here we go. Um, the next thing we'll do is we'll uh, change the title uh, to use a customer table title measure, which I have written here. Just bring it here. So you can see what we're doing is harvesting the direction, harvesting the top end and combining that uh, with uh, some static text to have the result. So I'm going to change the title of this table to use the field value of display values and customer table title. And there we go. Then I'll calculate the appropriate ranking value 
Uh, to do this, we'll need both the normal top-down descending ranking plus the bottom-up ascending ranking. So there's the descending one, and there is the ascending one. Note that I filtered out uh, the ones with blank sales, which will, of course, be the others row. Uh, finally, we'll use the top end uh, and direction slicers to return the appropriate customer ranking. And you can see that from here. Same thing. We've sliced. We sorry. We've harvested the values from the two slicers. We're using them to figure out. Uh, what ranking we're going to display. Uh, now we'll temporarily add the ranking uh, measures into our table. Uh, first we can see these two, uh, then we'll add in the customer rank that we actually want to use, and so on. We can see that um, the values are listed here and correspond to the slicer selections that we have. And so, okay, so temporarily, uh, we only added these in temporarily. I'm going to remove them now. And we'll bring that over here. Uh, then I'll add the customer sales measure, uh, which uses a switch true logic to handle three cases. Uh, if the customer is ranked in the top N, I'll use the sales value. Uh, if the customer name is others, I'll use the average of the sales value for all non-ranked customers, and if the customer is not ranked in the top end, I'll return blank. So let's just drag that in here too. Uh, now I will copy and paste this table, Control C, Control V. Uh, we'll bring it over here, we'll make it a little bit bigger, and we'll change the type of visual. Uh, to a line and stacked column chart. Uh, we can see that we now have columns for each customer. Uh, I'm going to remove the customer rank measure from this uh, and I am going to add uh, the average of other customer sales into the line values. Next I'm going to go into the filters and I'm going to filter out uh, customer sales that are blank. Oops, that's the wrong one. Let's do it. It is not blank. Sorry. Perfect. And now uh, I'm going to change the title of this visual. So when I do have another uh, measure prepared, uh, we'll just have a look at that for a second. Customer chart title. Once again, uh, we harvest the selections of the top end and the direction slicer. We combine that with static text uh, to form our title. Um, so I'm just going to change that quickly here. Uh, change title, function, and we'll format by field value, display values, and customer chart title. Perfect. Now you notice there's this one says versus in between, and this one says and, so you can see they're different. Okay, uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to color um, our, uh, our columns, and so on. I do have a a uh, measure prepared here that will assign a uh, gray color if the customer name is others otherwise it's going to apply a blue color so if I come over here to data colors and I select the function here I can change it to field value and again change it to display measure and customer chart colors we can see that the uh, column for others is now gray I'm also going to choose a dark color for the average line here so that we can see it. Now I'll use some simple math and measure branching to create measures for the difference of the customer's sales from the average of other sales. Uh, then we'll add these two measures to the tooltips for the line to stack column chart. So here's the first one. I'm just using a simple um, subtraction to get the sales. Value. And I'm using a simple divide uh, to get the percentage value. I'm going to add those two values into the tooltips for this visual. And then when I hover over something, uh, one of the customers, sorry, I can see uh, not only how much their sales were, by how much above average their sales were. Uh, once again, these uh, visuals are fully responsive to the slicers that you have on your page and you can choose whatever time period 
whatever top end value, whatever direction you want. Uh, there are a couple of caveats to this technique. Uh, I did two comparisons while preparing this example, one for customers that we just saw and one for products. The technique is exactly the same for products, so I won't go into it here, uh, but it is included in the sample PBIX, which will be available to the, in the future to Enterprise DNA members. Uh, what I do want to do, however, is to show this may or may not provide insights of interest uh, depending on your data. Uh, the practice data set used for this example provides an illustration where there are noticeable differences between the customer sales but where there are only small differences uh, in the product sales. So let's just go to the page on customers here. We can see that there is quite a, a wide difference between the customer sales and the average. If I go over to the page on customer, or sorry, on products, there's actually a very small difference between um, each product and the average of the remaining products. Well, well, that's it for this time. Uh, thanks for watching, and I hope this technique proves interesting and useful to you in the future. Bye for now. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us, and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best, take care.